But uh, the, the good thing, and we are seeing it here, is that many regions outside of Metro Manila are starting to grow even faster. So, I think uh, slowly the industries are moving out. Kasama na yung IT. No? So, that is very encouraging. Ang highest growing actually, or in 2015, yung latest figure, is that Bicol grew by 8.4%, uh, Western Visayas 8.3%, 7.9% yung Davao. Uh, Davao, I think, will continue to to uh, do very well. Lalo na ngayon, if you talk to the Davao people, they say that the capital of the Philippines is now in Davao. <laughs> so, so, but that's natural. Panahon na ngayon ng Davao. No? Okay, no, so exciting. No? There are many things happening um, even in the region. Kung taga doon kayo, I'm sure nakifeel ninyo. Okay. So, the reason why uh, the Philippines is growing is um, largely because we have a large population. Dito sa Singapore, nababasa ninyo na they always say 5 million lang ang population and it is not enough to uh, as a platform for companies to continue to grow. Kaya kung nababasa ninyo yung report ng Comedia the Future Economy, ini-encourage sila yung mga companies nila, lumabas na kayo, no? Kasi yung market uh, around the region, the neighboring countries are even bigger. So pag titingin sila, neighbor nila Malaysia, they're only 30 million. No? Indonesia is of course the largest one, um, pero some of the feedback uh, they tell us is that because um, maybe partly because of the religion, um, some people are are not too comfortable now. Um, Thailand also um, is is bigger, but um, the the there are issues on communication. Uh, they also have an aging population sa, sa Thailand. Vietnam, I think, is our major competitor. Alos kasing laki ng bansa natin, very aggressive. There are many Chinese investors going there. But then, then you have the Philippines. Um, some, although my challenge is the Philippines, a lot of companies say that uh, since we speak English, no, very Western and orientation natin, um, they feel comfortable. No. But there are other issues. Pero that's how we stand. And our disadvantage is that medyo malayo tayo ng kapit bahay. No. Everything from the Philippines is overseas. Sa kanila, they just cross the bridge or they just cross the highway and then as best um, but the market of the Philippines is young, and uh, imagine a, a, a market with growing income. So, so, lumalaki yun, no? so that's very attractive. One, one delegation that we brought to Manila, dinala namin sa Samoa, pag tinila nila yung crowd doon, sabi na, wow, no? this is the, the market that uh, we should cater to. No? Um, but, um, that market is attracting a lot of players, they are very competitive na rin, no? you, you have to be very aggressive para makapasok ka. No? And our advantage of being a young population, no? um, sinasabi nila na pumapasok tayo dun sa tinatawag na demographic dividend. No? So that means to say na a big part of the population are in uh, um, working age. So and then um, we will be in that situation maybe for the next uh, two decades. Pero ang, ang challenge doon, and this is the challenge really for us, the government, is that we need to provide the environment that will provide decent jobs for Filipinos. No? So habang sinasabi natin na labor market natin, labor pool is maybe 30 million young people. But um, the, the challenge for us is that we need to generate a lot of jobs. Every year, 500,000 college graduates. No? Dagdag pa, tapos maraming underemployed. No? So an estimate by some of the economists is that just for the last year, so this year, about 12 million decent jobs are kailangan natin. So that's the big challenge. No? Kaya nga, noon, yung sa previous uh, administration, Habang sinasabi nila President Pinoy na the economy is growing, pero people on the ground were saying na hindi namin ramdam yan eh. Di ba? Um, so yung issue ng inclusive growth, pinag-uusapan. Uh, sino bang nakinabag doon? No? So 
And I think um, this is part of explaining with this challenge. And um, may nabasa rin ako the other day kasi sinasabi nga na yung young market natin, mga millennials yan, mobile, you know, they want to experience new things, they, they travel a lot. Pero may isang sumulat, sabi niya, but actually, you know, karamihan ng mga Pilipinos dahil mahirap pa sila, they are not able to live that kind of lifestyle. So, mahi, um, a lot of them actually do not have good jobs, lalo na yung, yung yung age bracket na I think 24 to 35. So that's the big challenge. Ito sana yung magda-drive na economy natin eh. No? So that's the big challenge for us. Okay. So, the magito na nga that these are improving, foreign investors are coming in, and even local companies are investing a lot. Um, our big companies, yung mga Taipans natin, yung mga Ayala's and so on, they're growing even bigger. Kasi naka-position na sila, you know? They're, they're involved in a lot of things. Yung San Miguel dati, food lang sila. Ngayon, expressway, meron na rin sila. Yung, yung Tarlac, yung La Union, that's a San Miguel project. Tumagawa na rin sila ng, ng airport, yung sa Patiklan. I think the, the upgrading of that airport is a San Miguel project. Um, so, lahat ng malalaking company sa atin nasa infrastructure na rin. Yung Schumart Group, they, they partly own the national grid of the Philippines. Yung dating number four, yung nag-distribute ng kuryante sa Pilipinas. That's a Schumart uh, joint venture with the Chinese. So, um, they're all uh, engaged, deeply engaged, pero ang daming opportunity, no? Um, and the foreigners are coming in, and last year, it grew by 40%. No? In spite of the Parang negative, uh, ayaw nila kay Presidente, ayaw nila nangyayari, but yet the money is coming in. No? Idagdag nyo pa yung potential money that can come from China. Um, the, in the past, would you believe mas parami pang investment yung ating mga Filipino Chinese of China kaya yung Chinese investment in the Because maybe of the politics, no? but now with the warming relations, nag-aaway konti sa, no, sa Benham Rice, South China Sea, but the business continues to come. In the embassy here, um, our colleagues say that there are many Chinese who are maybe based here, who are traveling, who are flying visas to visit the Philippines. So that's an indication that sometimes polit politically, maybe may, may, you know, you need flamingo, no? but in business, they see the potential in the Philippines. And I think if you look at the news reports, um, they want to come in very big. They want to do infrastructure. They want access to our materials. Uh, they want access to our food. They buy a lot of our bananas. Pero pag tagalit sila, inaharang yung mga shipments natin ng saging. Ganun yung laro. No? But it's a big market. And China now is maybe our second largest uh, trade partner. Okay. No? Eh, hindi lang naman foreigner ang nagpapasok ng pera sa Pilipinas, kundi kayo din. Um, you, I think you're familiar with this figure. Last year, 27 billion US dollars na pumasok from all overseas Filipinos from all over the world. And very interesting is that, and I think this has been the case over several years, is that yung remittances from Singapore is una una one of the largest, I think top, among the top five, and to take 180,000 lang tayo dito. But, more importantly, yung growth ng, ng increase. Kung globally nag increase last year ng 5%, and Singapore doubled 10%. No? Tapos na yung figure for January this year. About 20% and growth. No? So, ma maraming, uh, no, I'm sure you're part of that. No? Partly because of the changing profiles of Filipinos in Singapore. Mas marami ng professionals ngayon. So, pag tinanong mo sila video, sila PMB, I believe, yung profile lang ng mga nagpapadala at saka yung amounts, medyo naiba na. No? And I think that's part of the reason. Part of that also are many individuals based in Singapore who have properties in the Philippines. No? Um, kasi maganda real estate sa atin, rental income, no? um, maraming investors. So, even yung all 
all levels were categorized in a real estate Malawi opportunity. No? So, Malawi um, payments sila for real estate are done to the mainland companies. Kaya po ang paso doon sa, sa figure na yan. No? Um, so, just to again build on what Richard said, kung gaano ka kahalaga uh, ang yung ating remittances and the possible role that we can all play for nation building. But so, kung may savings tayo, which we all do, kasi gusto natin i-remit, no, then it becomes part of the pool of financial resources that is available in the Philippines. No? The economics of the savings is equal to high investments. No? Kasi kung anong tinatabi mo, nasin sa banko, technically parang it's available now that the banks can use to extend loans to people who want to invest. No? So, yung, pag may investment, sa isabihin, nagkakaroon ng negosyo, pag may negosyo, may trabaho. So, think of it like that, no? Kahit na maliit yung, yung remittance ninyo, no? But it comes part of the national pool of resources that becomes available for investments in the country. Okay. Now, so let me go now into what BPI is doing, no? Na na-describe ko na nga na maganda ekonomiya, pero kailangan pa natin ng magandang trabaho, no? And then that, that role is, is uh, Ang tawag doon is trabaho at negosyo. Let me talk more about that. No? Um, I think, um, and then there's a quotation from Secretary Mon, sabi niya na um, pag-isipan natin yung idea-based, demand-driven, innovation-led business benefit opportunities, food, franchising, agriculture, and services. Okay. Ito yung meeting namin nung nandito si, ano, si Presidente Duterte, si na Richard, that's why iba pa mga grupo nito sa Singapore that are involved in promoting investment, entrepreneurship. Uh, pinamit namin kay Secretary Mon. No? Para just to first to recognize na mahalaga yung ginagawa uh, ng PGFI and many other groups. Mahalaga din, pinapwenta ko palagi kay Secretary Mon na how inspiring it is for us to, to come on a Saturday afternoon and to meet several of you <coughs> spending time to listen to what's happening in the country and to, to see uh, yung kung anong opportunities. No? Mahalaga ito. And this is a very strong signal that uh, I'm, I'm very proud to share. No? Every time sa Manila nagre-report ako on what we do for promoting trabaho, I always share pictures of, of us uh, dito. So, and just to show na gano'ng important ito, yung Philippine Development Plan no? for this administration. So ito yung parang um, strategic plan for the whole Duterte administration. Do sa chapter 9, ito yung title na Expanding Economic Opportunities, Industry Services through Trabaho and Negosyo. And then, I think, for the first time, no, for it really recognized overseas Filipinos as one of the key players when we promote negosyo in the Philippines. Dati kasi, parang um, hindi malinaw kung maybe just a, a paragraph saying that to tap overseas Filipinos to the, a source of uh, investments in bonds and other um, uh, investment instruments. Pero ito ngayon, for the promotion of uh, negosyo, the overseas Filipinos have really been identified to be a key player. Um, yung mga foreigners nandun siya sa trabaho kasi yung investments and generate nila. Pero yung, yung negosyo, overseas Filipinos will have a key role to play. Okay. Um, this is just the, the matrix to show na pag yung negosyo ay hindi naman para sa lahat. No? Um, Richard said nga na, you know, some of us may just be investors. No? Uh, some of us actually will take the lead and will really become uh, entrepreneurs. No? So, nabanggit ko na to noon, when Secretary Mon uh, joined BPI, sinabi niya na para tulungan yung mga mangyinegosyo, ito yung kailangan natin, seven M's. No? First is the mindset. No? Yung pag-isip na, um, yung mindset na Instead na magtatrabaho ako, mag-isip na anong negosyo ang pwede kong gawin. Um, coming over here, um, I was in a taxi with uh, 